People often refer to Philip Kotler as the father of modern marketing. However, unlike Estee Lauder, whom I refer to as the mother of modern marketing, Kotler was not a practitioner, he was not a business person, he was an academic. However, his contribution to ideas around marketing are vast and foundational. And this despite the fact that he started his career in economics. But perhaps this is what accounts for the fact that he was able to turn what was at the time a woolly social science into a subject that was capable of a strict analytical approach. Philip Kotler took a master's degree and a PhD in economics before he realised that economics was just not for him. So in 1962, Kotler became the Professor of International Marketing at the Kellogg Graduate School at Northwestern University. Five years later, he was appointed as the Johnson and Son Professor of International Marketing, a post he still holds today as a Professor Emeritus. His best-selling textbook, Marketing Management, is currently in its 15th edition. His Principles of Marketing has reached its 20th edition. Here's my 1996 European edition of that book. But in total, he has written over 50 books and many, many academic papers. He's attended many conferences, received many awards. He even appears on an Indonesian postage stamp. Philip Kotler has given us four big ideas that we now take very much for granted. Although they may have seemed revolutionary at the time, for most managers, these ideas now seem self-evident. The first of them is that marketing is a core business function. Before Kotler, marketing was seen as very much a peripheral activity for most businesses, at best, a kind of adjunct and add-on to the sales process. But now it is seen as fundamental to all modern organisations, and not just commercial organisations that have something to sell, but also not-for-profits and service organisations and governmental organisations who need to communicate with their stakeholders and their service users. Now, we're very much aware that without marketing, we can't put our ideas in front of the people whom we want to communicate with. As a result, it could be argued that marketing makes what we do worthwhile. Kotler's second big idea really does sound obvious. Focus on your customers' needs. Before Kotler, companies made stuff and then they pitched it to their customers. Arguably, they pitched it at their customers. Now they work hard to create the products that their customers need and want. Even if what they're doing is trying to anticipate what their customers will need and will want at some time in the future. So in that sense, marketing is no longer just about lining up sales for the products you have. It's about finding out what your customers will want, what they will buy, and making sure they are aware that you have it on offer and how they can access it. Kotler's third big idea was to see marketing as a process of exchange and communication. Marketing is really about highlighting the overlap between your values and your brand's values and the values of your customers and clients. So marketers need to create a dialogue so that they can learn from those customers, find out what it is that they value. I reckon that this perspective tracks all the way back to the time that Kotler spent as a postdoc studying behavioural science. This is because it places that quirky, irrational human behaviour that customers demonstrate at the core of marketing, a subject that was once considered rather abstract and theoretical. Kotler's fourth big idea was that of five product levels. He said that organisations can offer their products or their services at five different levels. The first refers to the core benefit that the customer needs. 
The second is the generic product or service that the organization has created. Third is the product or service that the customers will expect. Fourth, a product or service that has additional features or capabilities built in. And fifth, a product or service that meets the full potential to fully satisfy the customers. Before we leave Kotler, it's important to highlight the argument that he had with his contemporary, the other giant marketing guru of the time, Theodore Levitt. Levitt firmly believed that organizations should standardize their products and their services globally. They should build global brands with consistent messages and marketing materials around the world. Kotler understood the value of this, but he argued the importance of organizations to respect the local customs and the local cultures wherever their products or services were on sale. He advocates a mixture of global and local marketing that has come to be known as global. A good example of this are the many fast food franchises that are genuinely global in their reach, but each of which will have special local menu additions and deletions that respect local customs, local preferences, and indeed religious or cultural directives. So for example, in Jewish and Islamic countries, they will avoid using pork products. Yet they may have additional products on the menu that serve local tastes and local palates. It's hard to overestimate the impact that Philip Kotler's research and ideas and teaching have had on the discipline of marketing. If you're going to move into the marketing world, then Kotler is a name you need to know and his ideas are important for you to understand. Please do give a thumbs up if you've enjoyed this video. I'll be creating loads more great management courses content for you, so please do subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell so you don't miss any of it. I look forward to seeing you in the next video, and in the meantime, keep learning.